to separate the two things that that when the Lord starts blessing and when the Lord starts doing great things among us, the devil kicks his stuff into overdrive. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we're on the Lord's side, we cannot be defeated. If we will follow the principles that are preached from this pulpit, you will live a victorious life. If you just follow some principles... Brother David, it's God's will that we make it. Not, it's not his will that we fail. And, and, and don't misunderstand me. I have faith in people, and God has great faith in people. But the truth of the matter is, is you can watch somebody and see what's at the end of that road they're going down, Brother Pete. Whatever you do, hallelujah. By the truth, by the truth, and sell it not. Don't compromise your faith. Don't compromise your integrity. Don't compromise your walk with God for the pleasures of sin for a short season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reminded every day. Every day, because there's something new every day to try to discourage you. Every day. If my phone rang one more time this morning, I was going to take it out and blow it to smithereens. Between last night and this morning, just ringing and ringing. We can't come. We can't come. We can't come. And uh, Brother Peter, I had to come pray through. God is my witness. Last night I had to come into here and ask the Lord to forgive me for being discouraged. I've never done that before. But then I had to thank the Lord. Sister Sharon, I had to thank the Lord because of the change he's made in my life. And I had to thank him, Brother Billy, for the work he's doing in my life. Because as I draw closer to him, things don't affect me like they used to. And I know where my help comes from. Amen. And I've realized that when I'm weak, he is strong. Amen. Amen. Good service this morning. Good spirit here. But I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you. We have got to respond to the word. I have many weaknesses in my ministry. And hopefully by the time I've been here 40-something years, like Brother McKinney or the Lord comes, I've ironed out some of those. And one of them is coming to a conclusion and giving a good altar call. But the problem I have with that, Brother Billy, is the altar call is not even biblical. It is a weakness in my ministry. It's tying it all together and keeping everybody so pumped up that they'll just come running to the altar. Some guys can do that. I can't. But what I would encourage you to do is when the anointing is on you and when conviction is on you, don't think about those around you. Get out of your seat and make your way to the altar because the answer is there. The answer is there. It's an altar of repentance. Thank you all for coming tonight. Good-looking crowd, amen, even with all that are absent. We had 42 absentees this morning. And still had 76 in church. You just, you add those numbers together and see where we could have been. Amen. That excites me. Amen. It excites me. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Happy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 12, 13, and 14. Hallelujah. Amen. I've never preached this before. Of course, I never preached this morning before. Sister Maria said, I never heard that preached that way. And I said, I never have either. (laughs) 
Let me just give you another little, little piece of info. There is a place that you can go in the word of God that when you get there, you won't want to leave. There's a place that you can get in the word of God and feel in the spirit of the Lord that when you get there, you don't want to leave. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, 12, 13, and 14 says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. That's the word of truth. It's the gospel. There's just one truth. There's just one gospel. I need some more amens in that. There's just one gospel. Don't be deceived in thinking there's a number of ways. There's one way to be saved. There's just one. There's just one gospel. And that's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you for a few minutes on that subject, the praise of his glory. The praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Unto the praise of his glory. Let's pray together right now. Dear Lord God in heaven, we come before you recognizing you for who you are, thanking you for the service we've had. There's a good spirit here, good feeling here. Thanking you, God, that your presence is with us, that we're reminded through the songs and through the worship of your goodness, of your mercy, of your grace, of your power, of your might, of your strength, Lord. There's no limit to you. There's no variableness in you. There's no shadow of turning in you. I pray, Lord God, that you will anoint us tonight to deliver this beautifully, powerfully anointed word and somebody's life be changed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. As we do all things, clap your hands unto the Lord one time and you may be seated. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Again, thank you for all that came to church tonight. Amen. And uh, hallelujah. Pray for those that didn't come. Pray for those that are struggling to get on board. How many know you can get on board even when you're weak? Even if you got issues in your life, don't let them defeat you. Don't let a mistake destroy you. My, mm, my little children, I write these things to you that you sin not. That's the plan. How many know that's the plan? You don't wake up in the morning planning on sinning. I write these things to you that you sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Don't forget that. Don't let the devil beat you up. Don't let guilt and condemnation beat you up. you got to realize I'm just doing the best I can. And know it in your heart that I'm doing the best I can. And the Lord will make up the difference. He will strengthen you and make you strong in Him. Get on board. Get on board. Hallelujah. Get on board. Look across the waters. It's what's happening. Jesus is coming very, very soon. Very, very, very soon. We could be knocking on the door of Armageddon. We already have the mark of the beast is in place. It's already in place. It can happen at a moment's notice. You got to be ready. You got to be. I don't know if he's coming before, during, or after, but you got to be ready. And the only way to be ready is to be born again of the water and of the Spirit uh, and let the grace of God teach you to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I said that's the only way to make it is let the grace of God. With the two occasions here in our text, and also in verse number 6, Paul uses these words, the praise of his glory, or a derivative of that to describe true believers. 
It is a word that describes people that have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and have continued in the walk and in the life that God has given us. How many of you know you got to continue? He told the church, Paul told the church in Galatians, you did run well. Who didn't hinder you? You did run well. Saints of God, we've got to make up in our mind that I'm in it to win it. I'm in it all the way. I've made up my mind. I've made up my mind that no matter what comes or goes, I want to see my Jesus. I want to hear the trumpet sound. I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to live in dread. But I've got my mind made up. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And I've learned if I repent of my sins, if I die out to the flesh, the Lord will take me to heaven to be with Him. The Lord will catch me away that I got a shot at living forever and ever and ever enjoying the pleasures of the Lord. Sometimes we make it too difficult, Brother David. It just boils down to I got to keep on, keep it on, keep on, keep it on until he says, come on up a little higher. Until he calls my name. True believers. There's a difference. There's a difference. Somebody's got to get it down in your heart. It's got to define you. It's got to identify you. Praise is defined as words or deeds. Words or deeds which exalt God. Glory is defined as the exhibition of the excellence of God or the display of His divine attributes. Again, this is how Paul described true believers that will show the praise of his glory. Now generally, when Paul uses the word we in most of his epistles, he is speaking of the church, the people that make up the true church of God. One body. We've all been baptized into one body. There's just one church that's going to be saved. It ain't necessarily the Pentecost church either. But I'm glad to say that this Pentecostal church preaches the truth that will save you. Huh? It's the, it's the message that we preach. It's the word of God. And let God be true and every man a liar. But in this context, he's using we to describe the first believers. The Jews that received the Holy Ghost in the beginning. And he used the word ye or you to describe the believers to whom this is addressed, which are Gentiles. In case you didn't know it, you're a Gentile. We know well the account of the Holy Ghost first being poured out in Acts chapter number 2. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whichever you want to call it, filled the house where 120 Jews were sitting, prayerfully waiting on the promised comforter. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues, which is languages previously and continually unknown to them as influenced by the Spirit. And when they received the Holy Ghost, they all spoke with other tongues. Also, the Bible is very clear as to what occurred when the Gentiles first received the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10 tells the story of a Gentile, a Roman centurion named Cornelius who was hungry for God. Everybody say hungry for God. We got to get a hunger for God. He was led of the Lord to Peter who preached the first message in Jerusalem and then he preached that same message to Cornelius' household. Acts 10, 44, Brother David says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. The Jews got it, the Gentiles got it, and everybody, every human being that's got it since that day, if you get the baptism with the Holy Ghost, you've got it the same way. This was accompanied on both occasions, as well as other occasions, by water baptism in the name of Jesus. There is no difference, as stated by Paul, in the first outpouring And in any subsequent outpouring, the Holy Ghost comes the same way. And when it's arrived and you receive it, you will speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. 
Let's follow the account of the Ephesians conversion. He said, you believed. After you heard the word of truth, you believed. We know that they believed it because they obeyed it. That is the biggest thing I'm having to learn to deal with as a pastor of a church. I talked to Brother McKinney about it beforehand. Is I can preach till I'm blue in the face. Uh, some people will come by and shake my hand, grinning from ear to ear. They will be moved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but yet they will continue to go on and walk uh, the way that they want to live. Brother Peter, it's discouraging. It's disheartening. But you know what? We got to preach it. We got to keep on preaching it. We got to keep on preaching it. Everybody, Esaias prophesied, uh, who hath believed our report? Uh, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Not everybody is going to obey the word of God. But these believed, after hearing the word of truth, also referred to as the gospel of salvation. After believing, after believing, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest or the guarantee of our inheritance. Notice this. Brother McKinney, I had no idea what it meant. I began to study. Brother David, I got a feeling that most commentators have no idea what it meant because when I opened Matthew Henry and I, when I opened the NIV, they skipped over it. The praise of his glory. The commentators, Brother Billy, they didn't even deal with it. They just skipped over it because they didn't quite understand, Brother Pete, what it meant to live, to be the praise of his glory. The Ephesians heard the word of truth with the gospel of salvation and they believed it. After believing, they were sealed with the promised spirit of God. Now this seal was in reference to a seal that would be placed upon the packaging of cargo or of goods that were awaiting transport to another place. Whether it be on a ship or whether it be in a, a mule train, a pack train of animals, maybe elephants that they used in this time, Brother David, all of the goods, uh, they would be packaged up uh, and then they would have the seal of the king or the authority to whom they belonged to. This seal has served a threefold purpose. Brother Pete, this seal declared who it belonged to. This seal provided security because the name that was on that seal, every army he had, Brother Terry, every power he had stood ready to defend the goods under the seal. And the... Oh, and the third thing that it served, the seal served, is that it ensured that it would arrive at its destination. He declared to the Ephesian church, you have been sealed. I wish somebody would hear me preach right now. I declare to you that you've been sealed. And the seal that has been on your life, if you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, serves a threefold purpose. The, the lies of the devil are never more evident than somebody that is filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then the devil tears them down. The devil defeats them. He brings all kinds of lies, Brother David. But I come to tell you the truth. I come to tell you the way that it is. Once you are sealed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you belong to Jesus. You don't belong to yourself. You don't belong to the world. The ownership is declared. And the second thing is you've got the security of the name of Jesus Christ over you. The name of Jesus. That's a name bigger than any other name. I don't care what you're going through. You've got the authority, the security, the power of all of heaven standing at attention to come carry you through your trial. And the third thing is, you have the assurance that you... Brother David, we've been living beneath our privilege. You have the assurance that you are going to arrive at your destination. And Brother Rice, you got a pretty place out there on dry run. Are going that way, but that ain't your home. 
I got a beautiful home that I've been blessed with, Brother Pete, but that's not my destination. That's just a keeping place because there's been a seal. Oh. Woo! A seal of ownership. You hear me right now. Those of you that are discouraged, I would to God that I could go wade into the household of everyone that played hooky tonight, grab them by the hair of their head, and drag them into the house of God. Because everybody needs to hear this. You've been sealed. You belong to Jesus. You belong to Him. And the security of ownership is with you. And the, the insuring of your destination. Brother McKinney, it ain't because we need more numbers. It's because people have got to realize what they've got. And it's bigger than you give it credit for. Sealed. 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 Declares who we belong to. I said it declares who we belong to. It provides the security of the name of Jesus. Oh God. Oh Lord. Oh God. Church, we've got to gird up the loins of our mind and get ready to go into war. Some of you have got children that aren't faithful to the house of God. Please, uh, please don't misunderstand me. I'm preaching tonight that if you want the Holy Ghost, you can have the Holy Ghost. And I want everybody to get it. Oh, But the most important thing is I want to make those that got it to realize what they truly have. I want you that have the Holy Ghost to realize what you have have that has taken residence up inside of your mortal body. It sure is our destination. Brother McKinney, I'm not trying. I want to do a good work for the Lord down here, Brother David, but the bottom line is I want to make heaven. I still believe in heaven. I've heard it preached all my life, but I still believe in it. I see you. When you see these things come to pass, look up, lift up your head for your redemption. Draweth nigh. This is why. This is why Paul refers to us. Hear me right now. Paul refers to us. Not our actions. Not our words. But our lives. As the praise of his glory. I must live in a manner that indicates to whom I belong. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You are bought with a price and you are not your own. Sin, sin will keep you short of your destination. Well, how do I know that? Because the Bible said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He died that I might attain to his glory. This is why salvation cannot come only from our lips. But we must be a living declaration of his character. Because Brother Pete, it will only be the genuine that make it all the way. He that endureth unto the end the same shall be saved. But the ship I'm on may be in a storm. But it ain't the storm that concerns me, Brother Robbie, but it's the seal. Because as Job said, 
<laughs> Though the worms eat my flesh, Though the worms eat this body in my flesh, I shall see him. We have got to fall out of love with this world, Brother Rice, and we have got to fall in love with the next one. And if we get a proper vision of where we're at, we won't live in fear. Because if I lose in this life, the seal that has been placed upon my life has ensured me to live and reign in the next life. We've got to have it. and But once we get it, we've got to live like we've got it. That's why I've been... Please, I hope you don't misunderstand me. But it's going to take more than a walk with God to show up to church and get a blessing every now and again. It's going to take more of a walk with God even to show up talking tongues once in a while. we got to stay sealed. Brother David, the seal could be ripped. The steel could be torn. But we've got to stay sealed. An outsider won't do it. The devil won't do it, Brother David. He can't do it. He can't do it because when the seal of Jesus Christ is applied to your life, that there's not enough power in hell. Not enough power in hell. But when we choose to be identified with the world in which we live, we remove ourselves from the umbrella of protection that is placed upon us. It's a nice song, and it's got a cute little beat to it, but we got to truly live, Brother David. Take this whole world. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. For all that's in the world, Brother McKinney, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Ephesians 1 and 17, Brother David. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him God help me the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. The purpose of this little message tonight is that the light of truth will shine into our lives. We've got so many cliches and so many little things that we send around on Facebook and and you know they don't mean anything. I I can't get over the fact, you know, that somebody will will put something real nasty on Facebook and and then the next posting will be, uh, the devil's afraid when I get up in the morning. Brother Billy, that's what we got to get away from. I don't want a foot in each world. I want to be sold out completely, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, Brother David, authentic. Not an imitator, not a duplicator, but authentic power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Let's stand. To the praise of His glory. I believe, don't you misunderstand me, I believe we got to lift our hands. Because the Bible said, pray lifting up holy hands in the sanctuary. I believe we've got to sing because the Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. I believe we clap our hands because the Bible said, clap your hands unto the Lord, all you people. I believe we shout out because the Lord says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you people. And shout unto God with a voice of triumph. That's Bible. That's Bible. Uh, 
I, I want so bad for us to just realize what we've got. That we have been sealed. Sealed, Brother David. If I don't know if you're going to come to the altar tonight or not. I really don't. I never do know. This morning I thought the altar was going to be full. I thought it was going to be full. I thought people were just going to get out of their pew and come running to the altar to, to be able to walk out tomorrow and go to somebody and say, such as I have, give I thee. Because you see, that's bought and paid for, Brother Rice, at an altar. When we die out to the flesh and let the spirit in. But we've got so many people that have such a weak, watered-down walk with God. And it's not, it's not because they want to be bad. It's because they don't fully understand what they've got. And our faith in the enemy is equal to or greater than our faith in God. Because we have failed to learn to use Think about it. If you don't get anything else, everybody say after me, ownership. Oh, God. When the devil comes against you, when trials and heartaches come against you, when opposition comes against you, you can. It may still hurt. You may still be rocking and reeling, but you can turn to the devil and say, I don't belong to you. I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus. And what I'm going through right now is just another little hump on my way. I don't belong to you. And the say, everybody say security. I'm secure in the knowledge of who I do belong to. That's why it's very important, Brother Mark, when I took you down in that cold baptistry, Upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you feel defeated, just stand still. Just stand. Isn't that what the Bible says? And having done all to stand, stand, stand. Sister Eloise, sometimes it looks like we ain't going to make it. But if we stand, I'm going to make it. Because I don't belong to my dilemma. My dilemma is not going to define me. My sins don't define me. My past does not define me. I am defined by the name of which I've been buried in. And everybody say destination. If you get me, sickness, sickness, uh, start viewing it a little bit differently. You wake up in the morning and you punch your sickness right between the eyes. I'm going to do everything I can today. Don't nobody tell somebody, no, you just stay home. You don't. If they want to get up and go, let them get up and go. If they don't feel like getting up and going, kick them in the backside till they do feel like get up and going. Because if this sickness takes me, it wasn't my destination anyway. I'm not destined. To, I'm not destined to die in this world. I'm destined to live in that world. Ownership, security, and destination. Ownership, security, and destination. Come on, say it. Ownership, security, and destination. Where are you going? Where are you going? You better hold my mule just a minute. I'm on my way to Jerusalem. You better hold on just a minute. I'm on my way to the pearly gates. You better hold on just a minute. I'm on my way to kneel at the feet of Jesus in the morning. Oh, his anger endureth for but for a moment. In his favor is light. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy, joy, joy comes in the morning. Ownership, security, and destination. 
ownership, security, and destination. Come on, let's live. Let's live a life of praise unto his glory. Praise unto his glory.